Bonjour à tous! We continue our Bell's preparation video series. Today's exercise will be short. Indeed, there is only one exercise in the Delft B1 writing part. You will read one question. It may be an email like we will see today or other forms of letter and you will have to write a reply. I warn you that it might be a little difficult for you. But don't forget, it's a preparation video and if you want to be successful, you have to be prepared. And if you want me to prepare you, just come to our website and be one of our VIP members. I'll be glad to share with you my tips and advices to make you better in French. Depending on your level, I will guide you to make your foundation stronger and help you to improve your French methodically. Now, let's start the Delft B1 writing lesson and see you again at the end of the video. Bonjour à tous, welcome to French with Love Delft B1 preparation video. Today we will do the third part of this exam. It's what we call la production écrite. It comes directly after la compréhension des écrits and um, as you can see on the screen, they indicate that we have 45 minutes to do this exercise and we can get 25 points out of it. So, as always, I will pretend that it's me who uh, take that exam and I will explain to you how I would do it. And as always, if you have any question, you can write them in the comment section or you can send us an email. Every detail, detail are on our website. So, now let's see this writing production exam. It's gonna be only one exercise. So let's read the instruction first. And uh, so we receive this email from Louisa. It's our French friend. Okay, so let's read the instruction first. And after we will uh, try to answer this email. So we receive an email from Risa and they want us to respond to her in 160 words minimum. Ok. So, vous répondez à Luisa, vous lui donnez votre opinion en lui donnant des exemples d'expériences diverses. Ok, so we have to read the email now to try to understand what it's about. Salut, mon entreprise me propose de quitter Brest pour aller travailler à New York. C'est une bonne nouvelle, mais comment je vais faire dans une si grande ville alors que j'adore la nature il y a aussi les problèmes de la langue, du logement, des amis. Je me sens un peu perdu. Tu en penses quoi À très vite, Louisa. So yes, it will be difficult. We need to use our imagination. Indeed, you don't have to visit New York to do that exercise. So, what's the deal The company where Louisa works decided to send her in New York. She's from Brest. Brest? Brest, sorry. Wait. She's from Brest, which is a small city in France. So she is a little more scary, worried about moving to a big city. But she seems to be motivated, so she's a little lost and she needs our help. And uh, as her friend, we will help her. So we can start to write uh, right now actually, but since it's a preparation video, I want to show you on what they will judge you. As we have seen in the A2 video in B1 exam 2, you will have what we call the grid, la grille d'évaluation. It's here, like this one, like you see on the screen. So let's read it. Um, Respect de la consigne. Peut mettre en adéquation sa production avec le sujet proposé. Respect de la consigne de longueur minimale indiquée. So, if you pay attention to the number of words, you already get two points. Capacité à présenter les faits. Peut décrire des faits, to describe des événements ou des expériences. So, if you can talk about your experience of, or if you can describe some facts, you will get four points. Capacité à exprimer sa pensée, peut présenter ses idées, ses sentiments ou ses réactions et donner son opinion. If you can express your opinion, give your ID, you get 4.2. Cohérence ou cohésion, peut relier une série d'éléments courts, simples, distincts en un discours qui s'enchaîne. So if you made a logical 
you know, if you make cohesion on your text, it's if, it, if it is logical, then you get three points. Uh, if you make logical link between paragraphs. Compétence lexicale, orthographe lexicale, étendue du vocabulaire, possède un vocabulaire suffisant euh, pour s'exprimer sur des sujets courants, si nécessaire, les deux périphrases. Ok, so you, you can use your own vocabulary, you have a wide range of vocabulary, and if you use it well, you get two points. Maîtrise montre une bonne maîtrise du vocabulaire élémentaire, mais des erreurs sérieuses se produisent encore quand il s'agit d'exprimer une idée plus une pensée plus complexe. Ok, that's a good news actually, because you don't have to, to master the French yet to get a maximum point out of this exercise. You can still make some mistakes when you use some complex sentence. Ok, maîtrise de l'orthographe lexicale. L'orthographe lexicale, la ponctuation et la mise en page sont assez justes pour être suivies facilement le plus souvent. So, if your sheet is clean actually, if we see the paragraph, And, um, you know, if it is visually correct and beautiful, you get two points. Compétence grammaticale, orthographe grammaticale, degré d'élaboration des phrases. Maîtrise bien la structure de la phrase, simple et les phrases complexes les plus courantes. So, you know how to make a sentence, basic one and a more complex one. Choix des temps et de me fait preuve d'un bon contrôle malgré de nette influence de la langue maternelle. So, it's about tense, you have to be careful when you, you, you are using the tense. And you have to be coherent. Cohérent. Morphosyntaxe, orthographe, grammatical. Accord en genre et en nombre, pronom, marque, verbal, etc. Out of two points. So, be careful to not confuse le with la, un with une, etc. Okay, so it's going to be interesting. So, let's start. And by the way, um, what I will share with you right now um, is, is just an example. So I will show you how I will respond to, to this kind of exercise and tell you how you can get a good grade from that kind of exercise too. Also, if you want, you can write your own text and send it to me for correction. If you are one of our VIP members, it will be a joy for me to help you in your writing and give advice to you on how you can write better and get the maximum point out of this production écrite. Um, and it will be good for you for Delft B1 exam, of course, but also for the French that we speak, that, that we speak every day in France. Okay, so um, the first important point is that since we are writing to our friend, we will use the pronoun tu. We can also use familiar word because it's the informal register, like we say, le registre informel. Okay, now, uh, okay, now let's, let's take a look on the text that I wrote. It will be on the screen and we will read it together. Um, so, since we are writing to our friend Lisa, we will begin with Salut. And um, I know what you think. You, you may think that this kind of exercise is very hard to do. You, you are af afraid maybe of a blank paper, like you will have no idea on how to begin, how to start, what to write, etc. And it's perfectly normal actually, especially if it is the first time that you take such an exam. But you will see that by keeping simple things, by being just, you know, easy going, it will be easy and the first words, the first sentence are actually free. So yes, you, will, you don't have to think much uh, to start to write such an exam actually. You will see what I mean right now. For instance, we begin with salut because we are polite and because we, we, we are greeting our friend. We say salut and it's a good entry. Louisa used the same thing. She said salut, we say salut. C'est une excellente nouvelle. You know, we already start by saying, uh, by telling her what we feel about because she's motivated too. She said, c'est une bonne nouvelle. So we, we took the same. And since we, we know about synonyms, instead of bonne, we use excellente. C'est une excellente nouvelle. Je suis content pour toi. Again, we, we express our feeling 
and we, we tell her what we feel inside. Je suis content pour toi. And uh, finally, I can, we can write, c'est une opportunité à ne pas manquer. Again, we give her our answers because she asks for us what we think about and we give her the answer right away. C'est une opportunité à, peu, à ne pas manquer. And also you can use it, uh, you know, you can learn this sentence um, as an idiomatic actually, because it's a positive thing. C'est une opportunité pas, à ne pas manquer, it's an opportunity to, to not to miss. And you see, I said nothing to here. I said just, salut, c'est une excellente nouvelle, je suis content pour toi, c'est une opportunité à ne pas manquer. I keep the thing basic and uh, I already get, I already got 18 words. Can you imagine? I just answer it. I didn't produce too much. I don't use too much complicated words. And I already get 18 words in my pocket. So, now we start. Je pense que tu ne regretteras pas ton choix. Here it is important because uh, we give our own opinion right now. We use um, this sentence, uh, je pense que. So, je pense que, and we say, tu ne regretteras pas. Regretter is a, it's a word that we, we saw a lot in this exam, so we can reuse it. Yes, indeed, you can reuse the words that you saw in the exam, actually. It gives you more words, it gives you more vocabulary that you can use for this part, too. But here, the important thing is that it's in the future tense. Yes, tu ne regretteras pas. We talk about the future because she is not there yet. And we imagine that she accepts and uh, she will not regret it. So, je pense que it's on your mind. You can use it every time. Uh, you can write down it to your notebook. Je pense que tu ne regretteras pas ton choix. So, we got 27 words. And we continue. We continue. Tout d'abord, même si New York est une grande ville, je pense qu'il y a des parcs là-bas où tu pourras aller te promener et faire du sport. Yes, because uh, as we read it, she said that she adore the nature. Elle adore la nature. So in this paragraph, we talk about nature actually. We, got, we gave her some advice and we reconfort her, we comfort her. Uh, about moving to New York. So, we use tout d'abord, which, which makes, um, you know, cohesion in the text. We say tout d'abord, firstly, actually. So, you know, we put cohesion to our paragraph, cohesion to our text, and um, we begin. So, tout d'abord, même si New York est une grande ville, je pense que, again, we are using je pense, we give our own uh, ID, our own opinion, qu'il y a des parcs là-bas. Why we are talking about park? Because um, she loves the nature. So in New York, even, even if you never went to New York, you can imagine that there is some green area there. Et où tu pourras aller te promener, to stroll, uh, et faire du sport. Because usually it's what we do in the nature, right? So thanks to this paragraph, I already get 57 words in my text. Then, again, I, I, uh, I keep being logical in my text and I say ensuite. So, first, second. Ensuite, pour les problèmes de langue, tu sais, I begin familiar, l'anglais n'est pas si difficile à apprendre. Avec quelques cours, je pense que tu réussiras très vite à parler et à comprendre l'anglais. So, in this paragraph, I'm talking about her uh, second scary thing. She said that il y a aussi les problèmes de la langue. So I give her some advice about learning the new language, which will be English for her. So ensuite is an important word. Uh, problème de langue. So I tell the problem. Tu sais, you know, I comfort her. Uh, I show the jury that um, I know that she's my friend and I giving advice so I can become familiar with her. L'anglais n'est pas si difficile à apprendre. Avec quelques cours, je pense que, again, we telling what we think, que tu réussiras. Here, the future tense is really important because it will happen in the future. Très vite à parler et à comprendre l'anglais. And thanks to which paragraph, we have 91 words in our pocket. 
but it is not finished yet because she said that le logement etc and don't forget that we have 160 words to do so she gave us some hints and we will talk we will take everything about this so pour le logement again i make link and i talk to another program pour le logement Peut-être que ton entreprise te trouvera un appartement proche de ton lieu de travail. Ainsi, tu n'auras même pas besoin d'en chercher un. So, here is important. I, made a, I make an hypothèse, actually. I say, peut-être que ton entreprise te trouvera. I talk in the future and I say, peut-être, maybe. Uh, proche de ton lieu de travail. Ainsi, and I give my conclusion, I give hypothèse and I give my conclusion. Ainsi, tu n'auras, again, I use a future tense, it's very important to, to be careful with the tense. And we, we saw it on the grid too. So, be careful with tense. Tu n'auras même pas besoin d'en chercher un. You don't even need to find one because your company will find one for you. And um, we continue because she still have, you know, some fears and she's talking about ami, which means friends. So, let's talk about friends. Concernant, again, is a connector word, is a key word here. Concernant les amis, tu es quelqu'un de très sympa. Sympa is a shortcut for sympathetic, which means nice, sympathetic. And uh, since we are talking to our friends, we can make such cut. And again, it's important to make one because we show to the jury that we understood this subject and we understood that we are talking to our friends. It's not an official letter, it's an unofficial letter to our friends. So, concernant les amis, tu es quelqu'un de très sympa. Je suis certain que tes nouveaux collègues vont t'adorer. Tu ne seras jamais seul. D'ailleurs, on pourra toujours s'appeler en visio. Here is a little different because I talk about her colleague. Again, colleague is a word that we saw on this exam, so it gives me some idea. And since she will work there, she will have some colleague, and the colleague could be her first friend, actually. And uh, vont t'adorer, vont t'adorer, again, it's uh, future tense. And um, yeah, it's uh, what we call future proche. And uh, I use this tense because I, I, I want to show her that I'm sure that they will love her. It's not a supposition, it's not a hypothesis, it's that I'm sure. I need to comfort her, so I use um, tes collègues vont t'adorer. Aller plus infinitive. Tu ne seras jamais seul. Here I make an hypothesis, but I'm pretty sure about it. But it's still an hypothesis. Tu ne seras jamais seul. Future tense, you will never be lonely alone. D'ailleurs, it's another keyword, another connectors. You can use it uh, too. On pourra toujours s'appeler en visio. S'appeler en visio is a new term actually, which become very, very popular with all the teleworking, you know, the working from distance, etc. So we use it a lot in France now. S'appeler en visio. Visio, visio conference is the shortcut. And uh, you see, we already have 154 words. So now it's time to, to conclude and to say goodbye because uh, we are near 160 and we don't want to write 200 words because we will lose time for nothing. So, uh, we conclude. Si tu veux, on peut aller prendre un verre samedi soir pour en discuter ensemble. So I make, a, I make an invitation, si tu veux, if you want. It's, um, yeah, it's a group of words that you can learn as well. So you can write down, write these words down to your word book, si tu veux, if you want. I make a proposition, I, uh, I invite her, so I will gain some more points. On peut aller prendre un verre samedi soir pour en discuter ensemble. In French, you will hear it a lot. Prendre un verre, viens, on va prendre un verre. On prend un verre, which means let's go out together and let's have a drink. And we finish with j'attends sa réponse. So we are waiting for an answer. We let the door open. And we finish because we, did, we said salut. Now we have to say à bientôt. See you soon. And we sign with our name, Benjamin. And we're done. And it's 177 words, which is perfect. Yes, and we are done. We wrote all the things that come to our mind. And the important thing is to know 
to who you are writing and why. So if it was an official letter, we would have written it differently. But here we, uh, we pay attention to resist fear and answer them one by one. Thank uh, to small words like d'abord, ensuite, etc., d'ailleurs, etc., we gave a logical road to our writing to get even more points. So that, that was my answer to this question. That was my text. Normally, normally I get the 25 points. As we have seen on the evaluation grid, I checked all the things that they asked from us. And now it's your turn. So if you want, you, you can try to write a different answer to this email and you can share with us your answer. You can write it on the comment section or you can send us a mail, an email. And, uh, and what I want to say is that, um, you know, you don't have to have been in New York to answer that kind of question. You always have to use your imagination and hear what they want from you, what the jury wants from you is that they want to see uh, how you can give an advice to a friend and how is your writing actually, how is your writing in French. So if this kind of exercise scare you, uh, don't hesitate to be one of our VIP members we will work together and you will see that there is nothing to fear. With preparation, everything will be easier. So we finished this third part, but the DELF exam is not finished yet. We still have the oral exam. And uh, as I said you in the very first video, the oral exam could happen on an over day. But since we are working on DELF B1 exam right now, we will continue with the uh, production oral. And again, I will give you some advice to master this kind of exercise too. So, see you on the next video. And it's the end of today's video. How was it for you? How would you respond to this email? If you are our VIP member, you can send us your answer and I'd be glad to correct you and show you where you have made mistakes. So I can better guide you on which topics you should study again. And since you will be already on the special area on our website, you will be able to study the grammar or vocabulary topics right away. Yes, everything you need to learn and improve your French is in one place. And when you become our VIP member, you will have instant access to lessons, ebooks, exercises, and mini surprises. You will learn French with us. And we do speak English. Well, my wife speaks better than me, which means that we will understand you, your wishes and your needs. So you will never feel alone. We'll be here for you for any difficulties you may encounter. And if you are still not our VIP member, you can become one right now by visiting our website. We'll be there and we'll be glad to welcome you. And that's all for today. Till next time, stay with love.